des changements génétiques rapides. Fast evolutionary change in various organisms can be connected to the circulation in ecosystems of new toxic substances introduced by humans, deliberately or not, antibiotics, pesticides, or pollution by heavy metals. The evolution of resistance to insecticides in uh, insects such as tiger mosquitoes, as shown here, are an interesting example of uh, adaptation to modifications induced by humans. The mass use of pesticides in the 1950s, since the 1950s, led to a quasi-systematic selection of uh, resistance in the target organisms, as in non-target organisms. Mosquitoes were essentially treated with organophosphorated insecticides worldwide, and various mutations allow them to survive in the presence of pesticides. And this happened independently and repeatedly across the world. One of the mechanisms of resistance is the overproduction of detoxifying enzymes known as esterases. This overproduction can be linked to the multiplication and number of copies of the gene of esterase in the mosquito's genome. Dozens of such examples are known in the world. In the region of Montpellier, the frequency of mutations allowing resistance has been followed and monitored for about 40 years, and the frequency of mosquitoes who bear these resistant genes uh, increased after the use of mass pesticides. And the first genes of resistance can be identified by various genetic variants that survive in the presence of pesticides but have better persistence in untreated zones. This evolution compromises our management options in order to control this and avoid pesticides becoming totally useless. The evolution of resistance in mosquitoes also allows us to better understand the limitations of genetic adaptation. First of all, a mutation must exist in the existing population, whether it appears locally or whether it was introduced through migrations. And then, adaptation in a stressful environment, such as an environment subjected to pesticides, is uh, the result of a race between the decline of a population and the speed of adaptation. A favorable gene must exist to encourage, and there must be a frequent occurrence. This is called evolutionary salvation. This is the simulated uh, trajectory of a thousand populations, initially with decline. The blue one shows the populations where adaptation was fast enough to evolve within the stressful environment after a period of initial decline. However, a large number of populations became extinct before they were able to evolve and adapt. We can see that the simple existence of genetic variants that are adapted to new environments is insufficient to ensure the long-term survival of a given population. The increase in temperatures correlated with climate change means species face other adaptive challenges. In order to persist locally, a population must adapt permanently to a perpetually changing environment. Like Alice in Wonderland, who needs to run to stay in the same place. In this context, in order to persist, a population must evolve quickly. The speed of evolution of a population depends on its genetic diversity. One can define di a critical diver uh, genetic diversity under which the population will become extinct because it's unable to adapt fast enough. On this graph, you can see the forecasts of an adaptation model to a changing environment. It shows the critical genetic diversity below which the population cannot escape extinction. Depending on the fertility of the population and the speed of environmental change, 
the quicker the environment changes, the quicker it is, the more difficult it is to escape extinction. Populations um, with large sizes, such as mosquitoes, with a very great diversity of genotypes producing a great number of descendants, are able to adapt to fast-changing environments. It's not by chance if most of these evolutionary salvation examples uh, concern populations with uh, uh, large numbers, high fertility, and, regen and short regeneration times. Conversely, smaller populations with a weaker genetic pool and low fertility, as is the case for uh, organisms that have long lifespans, will find it more difficult to adapt to changing environments, even slowly changing environments. Spontaneous genetic change in populations that are already under threat and weakened by various entropic factors. Preserving genetic variability in the population as a source of adaptation in the context of global change is a priority. Dynamic management methods for the local preservation of species offers a number of interesting examples. These methods, unlike those of preservation such as seed banks or seed collections, aim to preserve a reserve of genetic variability rather than specific genotypes or varieties. These methods are based on the preservation of a large number of populations spread across different environments in order to maximize the diversity of local adaptation. This experimentation started in 1984 on populations of uh, wheat. Populations were formed by uh, crossing various varieties and grown in isolation across 25 generations in diverse environments. This is a diagram of the genetic variability for two hypothetic characters in black, the ancient populations, and in green, the expected evolution of variability across, over time. One expects populations in the various low sky to become genetically different, and migration between one site and another may help to renew genetic variability within these populations. After only 12 generations of separate evolution in different sites, the wheat was sown in the same location. It was noted that plants that came from populations that had evolved in sites with colder climates would flower later. In less than 12 generations, there has been a genetic differentiation at high speed in terms of flowering adaptation to local climate, but also other characters such as resistant to certain diseases. Competition between genotypes within the same plots also led to the evolution of characters that are unfavorable, such as very high stalks. So the best methods of managing genetic variability needs to involve both natural selection and artificial selection. In conclusion, living beings are perpetually evolving. This comes from random evolutions in a genetic characters, such as mutations and recombinations. The uh, fast evolutions in response to global change are well documented, but adaptation of living organisms can also create new problems, such as public health problems, for instance, the evolution of resistance to antibiotics in pathogens. In addition, the part played by spontaneous gen genetic evolution in mitigating the nefarious impacts of global change are debatable, especially for species that are already threatened by their small size, low fertility, or long regeneration time. Preserving the adaptation and evolutionary capacities of these species is a priority.